Devin Fred Hampton and also a McCoy Jerry, formerly known Devin Johnson. Chairman Fred Hampton was the deputy chairman of the Illinois Chapter of Black Panther Party. Who was, in fact, on his leadership, we have to be the largest chapter of the Black Panther Party in the state of Illinois. He was assassinated by the federal government December the 4th, 1969, uh, as part of the ongoing process of the uh, infamous COINTEL program. And you know, I know many of us are familiar with the COINTEL program. If you're not familiar with the COINTEL program, the COINTEL program is familiar with us. The COINTEL program was an acronym for Counterintelligence Program, a program in which the former director of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, said was created to discredit and demise and destroy any black nationalist movement, especially amongst the youth. Um, and the architect of that program was the deputy director of the FBI, William Sutherland. This program was not just targeting the Black Panther Party, it reached out to uh, other organizations, the Native community and other communities. One of the things, one of the tactics that the government feared about Chairman Fred Hampton was his ability to grapple and deal with not only the race question, but the class question. There were programs such as the Rainbow Coalition, in which uh, Chairman Fred was actually the author of, in which they were able to find points of unity and form principal coalitions with different, nas different nationalities and different communities. And the organization I chair today, the Black Panther Party Cubs, we still clear on the fact that we cannot be limited to just caught up in our own subjective circles. Just on the way here, um, just right after the just right through the res. Um, we just dialoguing in the car. Just talking about even some of the um, conditions that happen on the res. Everything ranging from um, the exploitation that goes down with the, with the stores. How there's a limited amount of stores in the community and how they can jack the prices up. And the people are forced to, you know, say, to go deal with these hijack prices. And we were trying to draw a correlation to that inside the community that I, was, I live in now. A lot of people, in Chicago, we call it Chirac, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people have an issue with that, so we refer to it as Chirac. Because we like to say we, we, we struggle to use brutal terms for brutal realities. Because it's important that we start, you know, calling what it is. Because being oppressed, being colonized, is embarrassing. Being colonized and being oppressed is embarrassing. And a lot of times we try to jab ourselves about it. We try to use euphemisms or try to uh, dress, the, dress it up. But we like, even when it's, uh, it's a matter, they say uh, uh, the first step in addressing the problem is recognize that we have a problem. And our position is we should struggle to use brutal terms for brutal realities. Again, brutal terms for brutal realities. And not feel that we have to get forced into absolute to believe that we are the victor or the victims, but we can be fighting back victims. Acknowledge that we are the victim of fighting back victims. We've seen this in revolutionary struggles throughout the world. We've seen cases throughout Africa. We've seen right here, on the, uh, here throughout you know, the, the, the Native People's Land, which we're very clear about whose land this is. We, very, we have no misconceptions about that. We've seen the, uh, the, the situation in Vietnam, where whatever conditions was the people we, the, the, uh, the people subjected to, and we said, take what you have, and, and the first thing, not that we are the victims, and we become fighting back victims. And even with that, we say everything is political. The words, the terms, everything that we use, it is important that we, that we grasp that. And uh, again, to use brutal terms and brutal realities. And um, we say, we, uh, me and Wolverine was having some, some uh, interesting dialogue last night. And we, look, we must look at history, objective, though, objectively, and recognize it as realness. We know that within our communities, within our the colonized community, there, there's been a history of contradictions. Even within, within the black community itself, there have been some contradictions. But one of, the, one of the things the Black Panther Party said, the differences amongst the people, differences amongst the people are reconciling. However, differences between the people and the state, between the people and the system are irreconcilable. What that means in plain, layman terms, in plain terms that you can understand on the south side of Chicago, plain terms that we can understand on the, on the, on the res, is that whatever issues that we have, may have had amongst each other is common, within the colonized community, we can work that out. We don't work it out. But there is no forgiving, no forgiving of a system that has it's, 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 it's stolen it's, it's stole the land from the native man and stole the people from their original land. So again, there's no forgiving with that. So with that, we are honored, we honored, I'm honored to be here as the chairman of the Black Panther Party Cubs and uh, reaching out 
and not, not come up with an arrogant thing to say that we want to start some coalition building, but to continue their lineage because you know, say we have worked together, you know what I'm saying? But let's also be very clear on the definition of the people. And not be, called, be subjected to believe that in our community, just because everybody in our community, they got, that, we could, um, that someone looks like us, whatever they relate to the people. Because in this war, and that's what it's, it's a war being waged on the people. They may call it a war on drugs, a war on guns, or a war on gangs, or a war on terrorism, whatever, whatever type of different slick, slack sound bite the state comes up with. But the reality is there's a war on the people. And in that war, we must understand that there are some casualties that we're going to subject, we subject that we have been subjected to, we're going to be subjected to. And also, there are those who collaborate and choose not to take a position not to align themselves with the people. So we must be very clear to be able to draw a line and not get caught in our idealism to believe that everybody's going to be on the same, same line of question. I got family members who are very clear to not align with the people. So let's struggle to hide the, hide the contradictions. Move forward this struggle. Because the deal is there is a war on us. And we say we're well, Minister UEP and the Black Panther Party saying that if we don't fight back, if we don't resist, it can be defined as nothing less than reactionary suicide. Again, if we don't resist, it can be defined as nothing less than reactionary suicide. Our lives are at stake, our babies' lives are at stake, our people's lives are at stake. And we say the spirit of being not only servants of the people, but as servants of history. Let's move forward, press with struggle. Again, we appreciate you all for having us here. Power to the people. Thank you. Thank you.